Good morning. How was your Easter? I hope it was a very blessed day. Uh, we were very blessed by our worship in the morning. We were um, very blessed with visiting with uh, some of our family in the afternoon and uh, in the evening. It was a lovely day. Yeah. Got to be so, so warm sitting in the backyard at our daughter's house that we had to put on sunscreen. Well, I got I got a little pink. You thought of putting sunscreen? <laughs> yeah. No. We said I was getting burned. My daughter said I was had a red neck, but it might have been something else she was talking about. <laughs> well, anyway, here we are. We're back again. And we are going to continue on with Matthew chapter 5. Today we're going to sing, O God of Mercy, God of Might. It's That's number 852. Right. 852. Mm. Guitar is slipping off my leg. I needed. I need to prop this foot uh, to my knee up to keep the. And guitar you're a carpenter. <laughs> I don't want to. We got enough junk floating around for this video with the with all this stuff. Well. So. Anyway, might, might be an important construction project. <laughs> Makes me mad that you can't figure out what to do with your. Well, I was leg. having. A, I was having a hard time finding that G money. Uh, back and forth with the D minor. I, was, I, was, I lost my place on the fretboard a couple, a couple times. Jesus teaches about anger. Chapter 5, verse 21. You've heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. I forgive you <laughs> Whoa, for, not, for not having made something to help you with your <laughs> You guitar. were the one saying you were getting angry at me for not having Now you're forgiving me. Oh, you have to forgive me. <laughs> I forgive you <laughs> for being angry. <laughs> not really, though. I mean, not really angry. 
No, no. I'm never really angry. <laughs> I'm not sure I go that far. <laughs> this is difficult. This is more difficult than I thought it was already difficult at first. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the whole idea of, I mean, <laughs> with me and my, and my four brothers. <laughs> Everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. <laughs> That's it for me and for all the rest of us. And uh, whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. Oh my goodness. We, that was our stock and trade. We insulted each other all the time. It was their and, love language. Yeah, right. Not so much love, but it was our language. And whoever says, you fool, that's the, that's the F word in the Bible. The F word here is fool. And, and it's a serious word. Um, Jesus is saying that the second table of the law, love your neighbor as yourself, is to be taken seriously and literally. And you ought to love rather than be filled with anger and insults and, and hatred and so on. However, uh, here's what makes it puzzling. We flip over to Matthew chapter 23. Jesus is speaking to the scribes and Pharisees at verse 16. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, if anyone swears by the temple, it is nothing. But if anyone swears by the gold of the temple, he is bound by his oath. You blind fools. Same word. He is bound by his oath. Uh, for, for which is greater, uh, the gold of the temple, the gold or the temple that is made the gold sacred. Anyway, Jesus. <laughs> Well, we heard a lot about the fool in Proverbs. Remember? Oh, yeah, right, constantly. The, the Maybe this illustrates. Fool. Do you remember when, did you, did you ever do this when you were a kid? Well. Mm, be like, careful. Uh, <laughs> well, if somebody says, somebody says, but, and everybody goes, oh, oh he said, but, right? Or, or he said poop, or he said, you know, some word that, but a word is spoken in one context, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a problem. And a word is spoken in another context, and it's information. I, I think Jesus is angry here in Matthew 23, but, uh, could he be speaking in love and call them blind fools? Mm -hmm. I'd say, though, that's a very risky position for you to take, or me, because I don't know that I ever speak anything completely in love. That is, love for the other person. <laughs> Many times I say loving things that also reflect some of my love for myself. Right? I love her so much, but part of that has to be that she makes me feel good, right? And she's good for me, and, uh, and Jesus' love. God's love is unselfish. It has to be because we can't do anything for him, right? He can't get anything from us that he hasn't already given to us. So Jesus' love for the Pharisees may also result in his anger and his condemnation, uh, his love for those who, who are being abused and misled by the Pharisees in particular leads to that. Plus he's God. Plus, yeah. God can be angry yes uh, righteously god can be righteously can be angry righteously angry i don't think it's possible for us to be righteously angry right not i agree not in entirety there it might be appropriate it might, you might be able to be able to be appropriately angry it might be fitting for you to be angry at some things there's certainly things in the world to be angry about but uh but our anger is still never entirely righteous so, so what's the point here? Two points. First of all, that the, that the law of God is love. That's the whole meaning of the law. Jesus says so. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. And that's what's expressed in these Ten Commandments that Jesus is saying. You've heard it was said, you shall not murder. You've heard it was said, you shall not commit adultery. The whole point is that, that your life is to be guided by love for others. 
which of course you wouldn't murder or call people a fool or and and so on. But you can't do it. So the the end of that, and he's talking about the you know your liability. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you've paid the last penny. He says you cannot come, you cannot fulfill the law, and you'll have to pay the last the entire debt of the law. But you can't. You cannot pay it. Jesus has to be the one who comes and pays it. Jesus comes with bail. And and bails you out. More than bail, and, more, and not just posting bail like it's a temporary thing, like you're out on bail uh, provisionally, you know. No. Jesus pays the penalty for your self-centeredness for your calling others a moron, which is the word that's used here in Greek, uh, for your lack of love. Jesus' love is enough to fill the absence, the void of your love. That's a comforting thing. Mm -hmm. That our our love, sometimes in marriage, uh, feels like love runs short. Like when you open the refrigerator and there's nothing there. Uh, the, the energy for love is hard to find sometimes. Jesus' love fills up what love is absent. When we let him, when we allow him, let's pray for that. Heavenly Father, I have, I have friends who are filled with anger. Some of it is righteous, it, it, injustices they have suffered or, or seen. Some of it, Lord, is not so righteous. They're angry that things are not the way they desire them to be. Lord, fill up what is lacking with your love. Heavenly Father, I have friends who, who are about to be married and... Love is overflowing. But Lord, we know that there will be days also for them when love will not be enough. Lord, fill up what is missing in their love. Lord, I have, I have friends whose marriages are withering and dying. And they say there is no love anymore. Lord, although it seems impossible to them, grant that they may see that they have no love if it's, it's not your love. And that they need your love to fill up the love that, that they promised to one another but cannot pay. Fill them with your love. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. You guys have a great week. It's supposed to get up to almost 70 degrees this week. Ah, all right. We'll see how long that lasts.